My earliest memories, at least that I can date, would have been 1955 when the whole Lancaster clan spent Christmas in Farmville and a couple of days after Christmas, Grandfather brought Dabney Pasco and me here because he wanted to do some work on the place. He was actually putting down hardwood floors in the uh, big living room. There was probably 18 inches of snow. I was in the second grade. Briar was his dog at mm -hmm. the time, and Briar, Grandfather, Dabney, and I had spent about three days here until Grandfather started feeling sick, and then we went home. Briar was a major part of our experiences with Grandfather. He, a big gray poodle. I came as a very little girl. I remember being here with a precious little cat that I loved the wool off of. His name was Wooly Kitty. And I had a doll that was named Nancy Tuesday for Nancy Worthington, who was grandfather's secretary. I grew up in Alabama, but we always came most every summer for a couple of weeks. And where the deck is now, there was a log cabin called Hangover Lodge, which had one bed and a little room on the inside and a double-decker porch on the outside, and that's usually where the children slept. Yeah. I read on the, the top decker of the double-decker. Grandmother was always telling me to go out and get some fresh air, but I much preferred to read books. And it was after uh, my parents uh, were running the place there that uh, Hangover Lodge got so uh, rotten and dilapidated that they knocked it down and built the deck that's there now. When visiting grandma and grandfather, first grandfather would take us fishing, but even more fun than fishing sometime was helgamite catching. Uh, and he, we, that was the bait we used, but you went to the rapids, you put out nets, and you caught the helgamite, which he had to pick up off the net and put in the buckets. At night, Grandma and Grandfather are the ones that taught me how to play canasta. <laughs> and we would play canasta regularly. Eventually, as he got a little older and could spell a little bit, we'd play Scrabble also. Well, I remember it was cold at night. We must have come often in August. And I remember putting on corduroy overalls the first thing in the morning. In the, in the earliest days, we didn't even have a bathroom in this house. So we had a little outhouse out in the back. And we had to go out with a flashlight at night. And I also remember that our mothers had a very strong sense of the appropriateness of dignity at grandfather and grandmother's breakfast table. And we didn't go slopping around to breakfast in our pajamas. We got dressed up and we, grandmother always worked on good manners. And we always came to the river. Um, over the years, at one point, there was a, a sort of rope swing on a branch that came from the other side of the river. I remember as a small child being very frightened when I went out on those shaly rocks and suddenly it was over my head or up to my neck. And of course the river was where we bathed for many years. I remember going down to the river with the ivory soap and playing in the river was one of the major delights for all of us. I can always remember there being a canoe. Always. Uh, aluminum canoe when grandfather was here, I think. I remember when the boys used to get paid, what was it, five cents a hundred for picking potato bugs off the plants. And grandmother and grandfather had a big garden. They've had a lot of work to do through the years to keep this place together. They did do a lot of work. <laughs> and during the 20 to 25 years that my parents owned the place, the biggest project was in about 1994. The floor in the living room rotted through. We first noticed it when our son William, who was a student at W&L, came over here with some friends and they sat on the sofa and the legs went through the floor. <laughs> oh, no. So at that time the whole living room was gutted from the dirt underneath up to the rafters. So the floor is totally new, the ceiling's totally new, but the walls are the same that were there uh, before. I'm trying to maintain a place, first of all there are always things you want to do. It's not easy to find people to help with them and of course it all involves money usually since i'm not a great handyman <laughs> and cuz you uh, have to remember that grandfather built much of this place with his own hands right and he was not someone who was particular about square corners and straight measures and things so repairing is not always simple to do the floors in the living room and the two rooms 
that were his bedroom and office uh, have all been replaced because they were built so close to the ground that they were the first to rot. But they lasted 40 years, so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> By the time it became my parents' home, I was married and had children of my own, and we did uh, regularly come and spend a week's vacation in July or August and enjoyed it, but the boys liked the same things, the canoes, the fishing, and we would take them to the river and try to catch Helgamite to use as bait for fishing. Uh, and that was always exciting, even if you didn't go fishing. And Tom, our younger son, has learned to fly fish, and he loves fly fishing in the river. They do look forward to coming here. Now they have children that they bring. Mm -hmm. The first time I dated Elner, we, were, we came over here. I can't remember exactly why or what we were doing, but it was <laughs> the 4th of July, and we came, and we were, we were over here. There was some getting used to the water because the first time Elner was here and we were engaged and Grandfather offered her a drink and she asked for bourbon and water and it came out looking like a Coca-Cola because, <laughs> because of the water. That was a little shock to her and she wasn't quite sure what to do. But, but I think she had to drink it. Another thing my parents did while they owned it here, they were uh, put in a filtration system so you can you can now have a bourbon and water that doesn't look like a Coca-Cola. <laughs> our boys are still very uh, fond of the place and our older son William actually proposed to his wife Carrie out in the front on the bench. They were staying here while they went to a W&L Spring reunion and, and that was when he officially proposed to her. Lloyd and I met in Stanton in about the end of September, the 1st of October, and I know that I brought him over here to meet grandmother and grandfather before he met any of the other family members. So this would have been that same fall of 1963. And we came back at another time when it snowed, and I, and that was when grandfather had to help Lloyd get out of the driveway where he got sort of stuck in the snow. And then, of course, we continued to come. I remember bringing Bill as an infant and having him sitting on the dining room table in his little infant chair. But this was just the one place of continuity in my whole life. I mean, here we still are 70 plus years later coming here. My parents in 1953, with a great deal of help from grandfather, built our cabin. So we, we began coming as a, either with my mother and father or as Lloyd, Elizabeth, Bill, George, and Tom, and then with daughters-in-law and grandchildren. You know, once our grandfather Lancaster died, it, the place was sort of divided into four parcels, and each of his daughters had one, but it's still very much considered a family compound. Absolutely. And uh, everybody enjoys each other's company when they're here, and we all go to the river at the same place, and uh, back and forth among the houses while you're yeah. here. We had many family picnics in the yard. We had the 4th of July fireworks, which Marshall Washburn would bring. I remember we had an 80th birthday party for my mother with many family members. We used to have a September birthday party around Labor Day because Uncle William's birthday was, I think, the 7th of September. My father's was the 8th, and I think Marshall Washburn's was the 9th, so we had reasons to celebrate then. We scattered Uncle Merrill's ashes at the Pasco property. We celebrated grandmother and grandfather's 60th wedding anniversary at the Pasco's house. I mean, there's a reason we're celebrating Lloyd's 75th birthday here. This has just been a, a center for the whole Lancaster clan. I think for me, ultimately, it's the view that still binds us all together. I mean, when I want to relax, I close my eyes and I see these mountains out in front of the porch. And, and all of us have come, and there are 14 in my generation, and I've completely lost count in the next generation of how many Lancaster descendants they are. But we all love this place. And I think when we feel we have possession of this incredible sight in front of us, it, uh, it's a blessing to every one of us for all our lives.